I'm getting married. My bad. So unfortunately, we won't be able to have a new episode out this week. In its place, we're posting Jordan and I's appearance on one of our favorite podcasts, Anime Out of Context. We discussed, as is no surprise, Chainsaw Man. Even if you've heard the episode before, Dylan's put in a few extra pieces of bonus content. So definitely check that out. You can find more Anime Out of Context goodness at AnimeContext.com. And we'll be back with a regular episode on the 4th. So see you then. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context. The show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And I gaze lovingly at some ravioli. (laughs) I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. (laughs) Oh man, Remington, funny you should mention ravioli because we are very excited to announce that we have two of our favorite people in the podcast, uh, Sphere, back on another episode. Oh my god, David, who do you think they are? David and Joel. (laughs) I didn't bring a mirror, so I don't know who the other person could be. <laughs> Welcome, uh, David and Jordan. We're, we're super happy to have you from, uh, of course, the Shonen Flop podcast. If you have never heard their podcast, go check it out. Uh, but not before finishing this episode, of course. Yeah, preferably, preferably. We've been, uh, <laughs> look, I have anxiety over collabs, so getting them started is hard for me. So when they do actually happen, it means the world to me when you guys actually like the episodes. I'm so Hell cool yeah. Best uh, today, I figured that since it's, uh, I think it's your guys' third time on our show, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. mean, are, are we going to pretend like we, we don't know what's coming? Are we supposed to act oblivious? Cause... Oh, fuck. Yeah, I forgot you... to make popcorn before we started recording. Get your popcorn <laughs> ready. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident in... In what's coming up. Wait, quick, quick, Rem, what do you think of Van Gogh? <laughs> no, stop it, David. Stop Wait, it. There... Oh, no, all right, all right. Stop well, it. Out, out with it. What, what, what? So for the context, we're reading a manga called Champagne, which you'll have to listen to Warm Body to get that full story. And one of the guys is like an old classical artist who lived oh, in France, no. and his favorite artist was Van Gogh. And Jordan is like, no real artist's favorite it was, artist It was so basic. No, Gogh. no, this manga had his head firmly up its own ass. <laughs> And it was like, oh, we're classy. We're all about champagne. And then this motherfucker who's supposed to be like this uh, oh, high and high and fancy, like experienced and famous artist is like, yeah, my favorite artist is Van Gogh. Like, this is so fucking basic, dude. Come on. If you're like I, that I, high I mean, up. But there's nothing wrong with being basic. So, of, of course, we're, we're reviewing Van Gogh's paintings yeah. today. Oh, yep, like, yep. Let's <laughs> look at, this, is, this one's called Starry Night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jordan Probably definitely loves his Kino. <laughs> sure. Uh, but no, no, alas, reviewing paintings on an audio-only podcast is unfortunately <laughs> not the path to success. Uh, but no, Rem, you're right. Uh, like, it feels kind of obvious what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, because, Rem, I'm all about keeping promises on this podcast. We've kept loads of promises on <laughs> oh, this podcast. Oh, yeah, historically. And uh, with that in mind, I figured... We have to, at the very least, keep a promise to our most frequent guests. Uh, and that promise that we made was to cover a uh, anime and manga that they love oh, and no. hold so dear to their hearts. And that manga is simply titled uh, Musume Ja Nakute Mama Ga Suki Nano. Okay. Or... Wow, the Japanese name for Chainsaw yeah, Man. Yeah, no, I was going to say, oh no, we're going to be Chainsaw Man. <laughs> <laughs> or. Simply titled, You Like Me and Not My Daughter? No! Oh my god! Okay, all right. Well, all right. Is this some sort of milf hunting uh, anime? Or, uh, it, that, hey, you nailed it this in is, one, this my was, guy. You nailed it this in one. This was actually the inspiration yeah, for Milf Manor, believe it or not. Oh, <laughs> it's the it's, it's, I can't Milf Manor, a actually, uh, a manga adaptation. It's uh, <laughs> Uh, the bit has gone back on me. I don't like this. I, I made a mistake. That's what you get. That's what you get. With my bit. Your fault. Hey. I made a mistake with my bit. Yep. Oh, God. I'm uh, surprised you uh, didn't save this one for if you had the folks from the Volume 1 podcast on. Given oh, that her you screen know. name is Milf Hunter. <laughs> yeah. I, I, th- I thought it would be a nice, funny little bit, but then I forgot about the Milf Hunter thing. Uh, I, I, I don't know how I forgot about that. You can that, never but... forget about your identity, Sean. <laughs> Sean, I wish I could. Sean, you can't escape your past. <laughs> my past? Wait, what his past, about? his present, and his future. We know about your how we know about your postings on Dilfs of Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You know that's a subreddit that Sean I moderates. Wasn't planning on getting bullied today. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is weird that I was always wondering why Anime Out Context was a pinned post on that subreddit. <laughs> See, now you get it. Now you get David it. visits it all the time. Uh, I was just confused about that. Yeah. <laughs> I have it up right now. I mean, the, su- the subreddit. Yeah. I know oh, you do. Oh, God. So. <laughs> you have it up, not talking not the about other the thing. anime. <laughs> Talking about the anime itself before I lose my goddamn mind. Uh, it's basically what it sounds like. Uh, characters, uh, oh god. Yeah, uh, it's about an adult, which is nice. Uh, oh god. Uh, raising, uh, somebody as their own daughter. And, you know, that never goes poorly. And, Ooh. oh, wait, actually, hold on a second. Oh, oh guys, I made a so mistake. so, what? I, I made a mistake, guys. Uh, it turns out that this is just a manga. And there's not an anime adaptation, so obviously we can't do it. So Yeah, that, that's their thing. That's not our thing, Sean. Yeah, no. Th- oh. Like, we haven't dipped into manga yet, and I don't think that we should uh, start with uh, a MILF hunting style of uh, anime, because that would probably not go great uh, for Besides, either of we'd our hate to say we, we would hate to step on our guests' shows. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, true. That so, is us. You know, we... Uh, I mean, Rem only reads one manga a year, and it's actually a week off before he reads <laughs> I mean, yeah. we were gonna, we yeah. were gonna have to call in, like, uh, you know, the, you know, the, the family to deal with you if you're gonna step on your, step on our toes here, you know. We got a got Dylan outside with the concrete Just shoes. Just because one of you is in New York, I don't think means you automatically have connections to the mafia. Oh <laughs> no, the Jewish mafia are very strong, and that's actually not a joke. The yes. Jewish, there's some very powerful Jewish organizations in New York City that have their own you know police what? force. That makes sense. Uh, so instead, guys, I think we should actually talk about what people really want us to talk about. Uh, Jordan, David. It's time for us to talk about Chainsaw Man. Oh, you mean? Oh, <laughs> yeah. so it's course, so it's a day that ends in Y. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes it is. Uh, because, guys, last time you were on and in the several of our conversations, you guys begged to be on our episode of Chainsaw Man, and I thought to myself, yeah, you know what, might as well. Might as well bring the boys on. Yeah. Part of the reason we haven't gotten to it until now, uh, and I thought that it would be a, a lovely uh, excursion for all of us to go on together, uh, with the big asterisk that, uh, now boys, Jordan yep. Remington. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love you both dearly. Mm-hmm. We love you. And I tolerate you, you are probably going to have differing opinions. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm going to have the correct opinion. Yeah, let me say something from the get-go, all right? Before we, we go off, watch it, come back in part two, talk about it, right? Uh, th- I recognize that there is a not insignificant chance that I come back with a review about Chainsaw Man that is less than stellar. And I also recognize that being in a call with these three lovely gentlemen, um, with those opinions of, of mine that might form, uh, would, would put me in a dangerous position. <laughs> uh, I just want to, <laughs> just, you know, let, yeah, it, let it be I'm gonna come behind, I'm gonna walk up behind you and just give you a swirly for that shit if you have anything bad to say about Chainsaw Man, my boy Denji. Oh, Jordan, no, with hair like that, it's going to clog the toilet. <laughs> yeah, you better be careful. <laughs> they're they're going to hunt me down. So, I'm, I'm, and don't get me wrong, uh, I just want to tell the listeners, right? Look, there's a good chance you'll disagree with me. D- just tune me out. Listen to the other three. <laughs> Listen to the other three, you're going to be okay. <laughs> Rem, it's going to be mostly you talking. That's the format of the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, this will be fine. This will be fine. Uh, I, 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 I'll just show up. Give whatever critiques I have. We can all forget about those. <laughs> Maybe we should. I, I think I pitched this to you, Sean, a while ago, but we could just have Jordan and Rem have a debate, and then you, me, and Dylan are like the host, like the panel of judges and make it like a debate oh, club. Please, no. God, uh, I, uh, here's the thing, though. I, if if I end up on the other side of the debate with Chainsaw Man, there's, it would be a pretty stacked jury against me. Like, yeah, we know we know how everybody in the call is going to come into part two feeling about Chainsaw Man, except for me. That's the big question mark. And I have never wanted to like an anime more uh, just because it would, it would be so much easier and simpler if I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, not every anime can be. I was about to say rent a girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> oh. God, yeah, I don't. Hey, can we never talk about rent a girlfriend again, please? I. Yeah, we did it I heard once. that really went to shit in the manga. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy, it was shit to begin with. And I was going to say, I, I don't think there was, I don't think there was a good part of that from what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. I haven't experienced went it. I, plan, I don't plan on that doing it. Had it. any great height to start? Yeah. At. Uh, I mean, 
So with that disclaimer out of the way, uh, what I'm going to ask you, Remington, uh, is a classic. Uh, Remington, what do you know about Chainsaw Man? Tell us everything. All right. Uh, I, I only have what I have gathered secondhand from some friends from the Flop Boys. Uh, I, there's there's uh, a guy who he either transforms into like part chainsaw or he is he is already part chainsaw. I know that there's a chainsaw dog as well or something of that description. Um, that, that's about the limitations of my knowledge. Okay, you know what, Rem? That's a pretty solid starting point, actually. Yeah. Uh, because uh, this uh, this anime, and we're watching the anime, obviously, uh, which came out in fall of uh, 2022, so really recently, uh, done by Studio Mappa. Uh, they're the fel- we've done we've covered a lot of Mappa anime, Rem. Uh, a lot of good, a lot of bad. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> And so uh, the question of, the, of whether or not the studio can handle an adaptation like this is not really one that we need to go into uh, because they churn out so many anime that it's like, hey, they do some good things and sometimes they don't. Uh, like, you know, they made Attack on Titan. So, you know, that's uh, a bit rough. Oh, uh, yep. Uh, but they also made things like Jujutsu Kaisen. Hunter uh, Hunter, I think. Was that was that Hunter? No, that was Madhouse. Or whatever. No, that was, um, who was Madhouse, that? right? Gonzo? Madhouse. Yeah. 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 Uh, they made Yuri on Ice, uh, Kakegurui, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. I truly just a, a very wide variety. They made Jujutsu Kaisen yeah. twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you mean Chainsaw hey. Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chainsaw. <laughs> and uh, you basically kind of nailed it in one, because the story of Chainsaw Man is primarily about uh, our central protagonist, uh, Denji, uh, and uh, the world that he lives in, which is very uh, similar and almost identical to ours, except for one very important detail. And that detail is the fact that the world is... Uh, a vampire. Well, quite frankly, const- <laughs> the, the world is not a vampire. Okay. <laughs> the world is not... Look, <laughs> you, you gotta be careful with the V word around Remington right now. We may or may not have just recorded an anime uh, that uh, sent him on a, a Frederick Nietzsche-style uh, spiral oh, of yeah. self-depression. And that, it was rough, that, it was rough. He he's a bit upset by it. Oh, uh, the world is unfortunately highly susceptible and always at risk to, as you might have expected, chainsaws. Demons. Oh, of course, <laughs> that's what I said. I mean, the yeah. world is always susceptible to chainsaws. I feel like you know, like it's, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> few things are not susceptible them. to chainsaws. Yeah, I I personally have a chainsaw allergy. Actually, <laughs> I also, you know I'm deathly allergic. Yeah, I just weirdly only have a kiwi allergy. <laughs> Sean, Wait, so, to the Take fruit, it. the bird, or the person from the continent of all from of the this above country of New Zealand? Con- <laughs> it's very complex when I want to go and get a smoothie in Zealand. That's where I. That's what I wanted. Mm. So, so like, if Fly the Concord starts playing, you just get into hives. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate because I I still want to go there, and I'm still going to go a- there. It's just a matter of. <laughs> Oh, it's, well. it's a shame he just I'm can't. I'm actually going there for my honeymoon. Just so I'm very excited. He just can't oh. watch Lord of the Rings. It's a, it's a fucking shame. <laughs> Crikey. Which is shame because uh, he loves it. Yeah. And I, I I watch it anyways. I'm like I'm like a lactose intolerant person who just loves ice cream. So Dylan. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Toilet. Yeah. First we talked about Sean P. Now we're talking about him blowing up, <laughs> taking a massive dump. <laughs> After a great start, fellas. <laughs> well, to be fair, the peeing thing was only in the pre-banter. So thanks for bringing that into the main episode. I think awesome. you mean the pee banter. Hey. I'll be here I, all week. Oh God. Oh well. Anyways, uh, the as I have stated, the world is uh highly susceptible to devils and demons and such. Uh, but the cool, the interesting thing about uh, these devils is that they are all based on uh essentially the fears of the populace. Uh, and the more prominent the fear, the more powerful the uh devil in question is. Hey, and if and, there's anything I've learned from working at a haunted house, people are terrified of chainsaws. Yes, that is correct. Yes, it, chainsaws in general uh, spark a very palpable fear response in a large amount of people. So having uh, the proverbial chainsaw devil or the chainsaw man being the uh, main central uh, protagonist slash MacGuffin. Uh, really lends itself to a world where the massive threats are based on fears. Uh, and that's actually kind of where our story begins. Uh, okay. Because uh, our our boy Denji, our boy Denji, he's... Our son Denji, look, please. Yeah, he's... <laughs> Dennis. I'm not going to mince words with you, Rem. 
Dennis, yes. I was just about to say, uh, Rem, <laughs> if you get involved in the Chainsaw Man fandom, you will see people refer to Denji as Dennis. Why? It's, uh, <laughs> because <laughs> someone's phone autocorrected it, and then just they just went with it. It's, so <laughs> oh, okay, of course. Dennis, and then part two, there's a character name also who everyone calls Ashley. The, the joke is that <laughs> like, those, those are the four kids' names. I see, I understand. Yeah. But now it's mutated, so now people call him Dennis. <laughs> Of course, <laughs> you can't just have one layer of a meme joke. It's gotta be like fucking two. You keep going. Yeah. The 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 levels go deep. The levels go deep. Uh, but the story starts with Denji, and how I would describe Denji as Remington is well, he's an idiot. Let's start <laughs> yes. off with that. Yes, like, he's an idiot. Uh, but he's a very uh, let's he's he's an idiot, and he has a lot of uh personal desires, but he's never malicious in his desires. Uh. A, a true chaotic neutral character, if you really want to think oh, about it. Fuck. A chaotic yeah. neutral idiot with chainsaws. Yes. Cool. Cool. Yeah. No. He's. Uh... <laughs> is that is that a wrong comparison? Would you guys say? No, that sounds no, fair. This fair. just feels yeah. like every other D and D character that's ever been made. <laughs> a little bit, little bit. Uh, and the story starts when Denji and uh, his lovely little dog, uh, Pochita. I have a little Pochita uh, stuffed animal, by the way. I'm looking at him right <laughs> yep, now. God. And yep. he got me a <laughs> Jordan got me an outfit of, for my dog to dress her up like Holy Pochita. Shit, yep. That's yep. so that's Let's see if I can good. get a picture of it. That's very good. Uh but Denji and Pochita, uh they're all they all, they're the only people that have each other. Uh because the story starts with Denji essentially being completely robbed of his uh adolescent life because uh his uh father, uh complete asshole, essentially abandoned him with an overwhelming mountain of debt. Ah. Yep, and he uh, he and Pochita work together to slay uh, lesser devils for, like, pennies on the dollar, essentially, uh, that uh, almost inevitably goes back to uh, his debtors, which, I, if, I recall, if I recall correctly, are the Yakuza? I feel like they're it's, Yakuza. It's, I think well, that sounds right. I don't know if they specifically say yeah. Yakuza, but it's very clear some kind of organized crime family syndicate unit. Yeah, so Yakuza, it's essentially. It's basically Yakuza. And... Uh, he is just miserable and having an awful, awful time. And essentially, at a certain point, uh, Denji and Pochita form a special bond that allows uh, Denji to fully utilize the power of the Chainsaw Devil. And uh, he's taken into an organization to actually help properly uh, fight devils as well as, uh, you know, not be killed by this organization. Because uh, usually devils are killed once they get past a certain threat level. And, you know, since he doesn't want to do that, he votes to work for this organization instead. And that's essentially where the story begins. Okay. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm I'm ready to get into it, but I, I have a very important question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many episodes do we have to watch, Sean? <laughs> well, good news for our guests is something tells me they probably have already watched the whole uh, first season. Is that correct? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll know exactly how uh what i'm thinking when i tell you how many uh and we don't have a whole lot of time in between uh, these recording sessions uh so as much as people want us to uh watch the whole first season we're not going to be able to do that unfortunately Aww. uh <laughs> look rem will kill me if i force him to watch uh 12 episodes of an anime in a two-day time period he will be very <laughs> upset with me but it's the uh, best anime you'll see all year it's, it's pretty fucking good they'll be it's thanking pretty, you at the end of it if, if it good. is as good as you say then a revisit will happen <laughs> oh, okay. i'm sure a revisit will happen anyways because <laughs> this is a very popular series like the manga itself has like transcended uh uh, the popular zeitgeist like i actually fun fact um there is uh this swedish pop star named uh tov lo and due to like various uh things i wound up meeting her um <laughs> and i told her to watch chainsaw man <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you meet a so pop one star person in Sweden is familiar with Chainsaw she's Man. She's a. Uh, at. <laughs> she is a pop star. I asked my friend in Sweden. She is massive over there. My girlfriend. <laughs> so you meet a pop star and you're like, my priorities. The two, the two questions I, need I asked. To spread <laughs> the great word of Chainsaw. Two Man. things I said was, "Hey, do you like anime?" She's like, "Yeah." <laughs> And I'm like, oh man, I've been watching Chainsaw Man. You should check it out. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. To her. <laughs> oh god, I've never felt a stronger bond with you. Oh, oh hell yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm fucking proud of it. I don't even know how to respond to that. Yeah. 
Uh, but Jordan, no, Jordan forgot to ask if she'd want to come on our show. Yeah. <laughs> I froze Priorities. Up about, yeah. Priorities. Priorities. Chainsaw Man uh, for Jordan is more important than your show. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's fucking hilarious. Not gonna, not gonna, uh, David might not like uh, <laughs> how I respond to that. So, uh, <laughs> so essentially, uh, I feel like just under half of the first season should be more than enough. I think five episodes will be more than enough for a solid Chainsaw Man episode. It gives us enough to talk about while also giving Rem a strong uh, vibe for the show. And by the fifth episode, it ends at the start of a of a proper arc with a overarching goal for the series at hand. And it just gives a uh, Rem an idea. It'll give Rem an idea of where the show will be going from there while also making sure he, ha- he has a good understanding of what Chainsaw Man is trying to accomplish. Okay. Uh, and a slight warning for people who are not uh, familiar. Uh, this show is violent. When your main character has chainsaws for a head and hands, uh, there's going to be a lot of blood, a lot of violence and a lot of, to, to be fair, this is still greatly toned down from his previous manga that he was making. <laughs> oh, God, Fire Punch was so fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, look, let's just say that uh, the author for Chainsaw Man loves his graphic details. So without further ado, I think that'll do it for us. Let's get started. Let's go watch five episodes of the hit 2022 anime, Chainsaw Man. Hell yes. So, so during COVID, Chainsaw Man was still running, and like Shonen Jump is asking all the offers like how they're dealing with COVID and stuff. And you know, you've got like some of them are like, "Oh, it's so scary." Otis, like, you gotta check in on your friends, you know, blah blah blah. And then Fujimoto just ignores the question and says, "Hey, if you didn't know, Domino's is doing two large pizzas for nine ninety nine. It's a great deal. I highly recommend it." And we are back after watching five whole episodes of the hit 2022 anime chainsaw man now gentlemen (laughs) we've watched five episodes which is a good amount to get a good strong first impression but as has been said in the past a lot of people consider the very beginning of chainsaw man to be one of the weaker aspects of the story so, with that in mind, I'm going to give... Well, I feel like you've set me up to fail in that case. <laughs> well, look, I, I couldn't tell you that beforehand, Rem, because otherwise uh, you would have altered uh, sensibilities. Uh, They're good enough. They're good yeah, enough. That... They're still excellent. Okay, all right, okay. All right. Oh, here we go, here we now go. Now I'm going to it. give an opportunity <laughs> to our lovely guests, Remington, yep. to uh, expound on why they enjoy Chainsaw uh, Man so much, broadly speaking. And for once, we can actually uh, get a bit of a comparison to uh, the manga by people who are pretty informed. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I I will say, you chose to end it on right before a quintessential Chainsaw Man is not written by a mentally stable person. With I think we can say it very much embodies the spirit of Chainsaw Man, how that arc we ended on, we... The arc resolves that we yep, stopped at a cliffhanger. But yeah. unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast sometimes. <laughs> sometimes we don't always get a chance to yeah. watch a whole lot. Because when you're consuming an anime, generally speaking, three to five episodes is usually a good no, amount fair. to tell. And if the start of that arc is interesting enough for people to continue, they will likely continue and finish it at that point. Uh, that Not to mention, tight recording schedule. Uh, we've been busy, busy bees lately. And I wanted to give a nice good taste of what the show is like so that you could have a decently informed first look opinion. Uh, But with that in mind, uh, Jordan, Mm -hmm. David, what are your thoughts on Chainsaw Man as a whole? And why do you think it's a good uh, series that needs to be uh, watched and enjoyed? Oh God, where do in this essay, I (laughs) (laughs) know it it feels so oddly straightforward. A lot of the time, like, um, it's hard to explain. It's just kind of you don't have to worry about all this excess bullshit. It's it's pretty easy to follow. Um, and the shit that happens in it is just so nuts. Like, oh my god, I'm 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 doing a terrible job of explaining this. Here, here's the. I feel like we should just do a part where I just say like pretend to say a spoiler, and then Dylan bleeps it, and Rem just goes, "Oh my fucking god, <laughs> that's what happens." <laughs> Can we do oh, that? Oh, God. It's as like... hilarious as that would be, uh, 
whatever Ugh. Rem says after it will immediately destroy that world you've created. That mm. that world will be Ugh. immediately no, okay. destroyed. But here's the thing. Making that joke, Sean and Jordan, you both can think of at least five things I could say right now that would actually elicit that response probably out of Rem. And that's the magic of Chainsaw Man. That's the thing, is it probably wouldn't work quite as well, but there is a lot of bonkers things that happen in Chainsaw Man that uh, make it in- an interesting read. Because uh, what I will say, uh, this is supposed to be your guys' floor, but what I will say is the creativity <laughs> Thanks. behind a lot of, of how the events play out in the series is what makes it interesting. Oh, th- there's also a lot of depth, I feel. Um, like, I I love Denji. He starts out with like such a simple but understandable like uh character motivation his life fucking sucks he has absolutely like nothing but he still has like kind of like a as much of a positive attitude as he can going with it like thanks to his little guy his little friend his little buddy his little chainsaw puppy um pochita of course um and he gets involved with all of these like very manipulative people in terrible situations but because you saw where he came from it's like yeah no i get it like this is like stunning to you that you're you're even able to eat every day okay i yeah i kind of get it like you're being treated poorly but yeah i kind of get it i also think fuji fujimoto um i think one of the big things is chainsaw man is probably one of the funniest action manga ever created like i i genuinely this is one of the few manga that has made me physically laugh out loud where I-, I won't give any spoilers rep, but just when a certain character says, well, this situation is unwinnable, I literally had to stop because I was laughing so hard from that situation. This series of episodes also contains one of my favorite moments in all of Chainsaw Man, possibly of like all anime, which is Aki getting ready for the for his morning. And that where... wasn't even in the manga. Oh, it wasn't in the manga. I didn't no, even know that. No, that was added into the manga or that was added into the anime. Wow. So basically what happens is you see Aki get up and he's just getting ready for his day and he like makes coffee and he like gets his newspaper and he just kind of sits out on the porch smoking a cigarette, reading a newspaper. And you know, he does that every day. And that's a fucking way to begin a day. (laughs) It's actually interesting. Miyazaki calls that idea ma, which is the sound in between claps. So, like, if you've ever watched, like, Spirited Away, if you remember, like, when they're on the train and there's nothing, it's just them sitting on the train for, like, maybe five seconds just watching the scenery go by. That's the concept of Ma. And I think Chainsaw Man does a great idea where I think to build on what Jordan said, Fujimoto, one of his biggest strengths is he knows that there is value in having scenes that are not immediately important, but not feeling like filler. So, for context, like, uh, uh, Sean, tell me if I'm giving too much spoilers, but essentially, after this arc, they just go and have drinks and hang out. Like That's, that's not it. too much of a spoiler. It just makes that's them fine. feel... That just makes them feel like they're real people. They talk about life. They get to know each other. But think about how many series they would say, oh, that's not a fight. That's not progressing the plot immediately. We don't need a scene like that. But by having those moments, these feel like characters. It feels like a living world where you find out what they are actually like. And they feel like real people that have lives outside of the plot in a way that is so rare to see in manga and anime. Because a lot of them just don't either have the respect or the time to show moments like that. Yeah, I mean, if you actually go through, like, the first volume in the, uh, of Chainsaw Man, the first couple of volumes, Chainsaw Man barely appears. Like, he's in, like, a couple fights. I mean, Denji's obviously there, but, like, the vast majority of, of Chainsaw Man, Denji is not Chainsaw Man. He's just kind of living his life, and you really get to know him. Also, what I really like about Denji is that he is obviously horny. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, to this day, but, speaking of. But he's not pushy about it like it's 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 a very understandable like innocent kind of horniness like it would be so easy to make that character just horrible but like it's he skirts a line with it where it's just like oh man denji yeah you're gonna get some boot you're gonna get to touch some boobs someday you're gonna find a find a nice girl i believe in you denji i really hope you get there so all in all uh, you guys have very strong feelings about this. Uh, as an anime adaptation, do you think that they did a really good job? We already mentioned a scene that wasn't in the manga, so. Yeah. I, I, I think it's definitely a good adaption. My one concern is I feel like the art style was not true to Fujimoto's art, but to be honest, the art has always probably been a bit of the weaker side, like the technical quality of the art, his composition, his actual, everything is great, but it's just like, I just kind of wish you were better at drawing things. It's like, it's hard to like, maybe Jordan, you can explain it better of what I mean. Like Fujimoto is not a strong artist, but it's not like the art is bad. 
I mean, I completely disagree. I think Fujimoto is a fantastic artist. I, I think. That, I mean, oh, Don, I we have seen David... some fucking. That man cannot draw shoes for the life. The shoes, the shoes are interesting, but they don't detract <laughs> from his uh, from his skill to me. I mean, I uh, I think David is more talking about like the cleanliness of his lines, but I that doesn't bother me at all. Um, but I, I will say, like, I'm trying to get used to it, but the CG is still tough for me there's still a bit <laughs> yeah. of a hurdle to get through i'm trying man uh yeah i have like, it would be impossible to render denji conventionally as a television yeah. anime okay it would be a lot harder um but man I, I think that the part where he's standing there and you just see the uh you just see like the chainsaws kind of whirring and stuff i, I just there's like one shot where i just don't think it looks good I think usually it looks pretty good, though. I, I will say, uh, and this this could be because uh, just like uh, a month, maybe a month and a half ago or so, uh, Sean and I, we, we did Digimon on the, the podcast. And <laughs> whether it be the design combined with the CGI, especially the the very first like uh, showing uh, within Chainsaw Man of Chainsaw Man, I was like, I'm getting... Not strict Digimon vibes, but like they're there, they're present. <laughs> he, he, oh my god, he does kind of look like a dog, <laughs> he both, yeah, he <laughs> kind of looks like a Digimon. Fun. It he kind of looks like dog. the Green CGI Man. effect he's, he's adds like a to Green it. Mon thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I hear, I, I see it. It's a cool Digimon though, and I love Digimon. So I don't even <laughs> fucking care. I don't Digimon even Tamers, care. man, what a great uh, series. Digimon Tamers, aka Evangelion for kids. That's what that show is. <laughs> yes. It is. It is <laughs> yeah. something. It is dark. All right. So now that uh, the Chainsaw fanboys have had a chance, Remington. <laughs> hold else. on. Hold on. Let me let me grip the edges of my chair <laughs> and like squeeze onto the hand onto like the the arm bar is just white knuckling it while he goes on. You know, okay? let, let, let's jump in. Give give a broad overview. Uh, get get into episode one, and my my thoughts will gradually become apparent. Uh, for better and for worse. So. Episode oh, one, God. it opens up with, uh... David, I'm here for you. <laughs> with first-person perspective, Ugh. Denji going through, like, an alleyway. It was very reminiscent of those, like, zombie games in an arcade, because they're immediately into the, the CGI. Uh, and he wakes up, and we see that he's in squalor. He's he's given his own body parts for money, but he's still in debt. Uh, he goes to kill a devil with his chainsaw dog. He kills the tomato devil. Uh, even after that, yes. he's still broke as hell. We learn about, like, he, he took on his father's debt, um, and the Yakuza is manipulating him for money and just taking full advantage over him, viewing him as a worthless dog, right? Um, eventually, he's about to take on another mission with the Yakuza, but as it turns out, like, the mob boss has been taken over by a zombie devil, uh, who has just a horde of different zombies, and uh, and they decide we're they're gonna kill Denji. They're gonna fuck him up, kill him, make him a zombie maybe, uh, and uh, just absolutely obliterate him uh, and his poor dog. Dump him in the trash. Uh, but we we see that him and and his his dog Pachita, uh, they made uh, a deal early on. Uh, he saved Pachita's life, and one day Pachita will save his. So this is the opportunity. Uh, Pachita kind of just takes over part of his body, uh, transforms him into a Chainsaw Man, it becomes his literal heart, uh, and he, 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 as Chainsaw Man, he rips everything apart, just completely obliterates it. With CGI, it's not the worst, but it is n noticeable. I, it's, it's, it's noticeable. <laughs> it's, the comparison that, that is, between yeah. the standard uh, traditional art and the CG is uh, very apparent. Yeah. I, I do want to say that one thing is there is a lot of rotoscoping in this series as well, which sometimes you may think something is CGI. It's actually rotoscoped hand animation because it's just such an in, like it's so like, I guess, higher frame rate than they can the more traditionally styled animated. Parts. Dave, David, I don't think that they rotoscope Chainsaw Man's head. <laughs> no, that is 100 percent CGI. But there are definitely parts where like you're like, this looks weird. And it's just rotoscoped. Yeah, I, I it's not the worst CGI we've seen, but. It, you know, I think they did a pretty good job. It's just like CGI is still not really through its version of the Uncanny Valley yet. Yeah. You know? That being said, uh... this whole fight scene, there's uh some really good like and uh just in a lot of the the movements, there's good energetic animation that demonstrates like personality with the movements, uh which is always uh, appreciated because very often 
we don't get that at all. Uh, he absolutely right. obliterates all the, the zombies and the devil. Um, when some other uh, m devil hunters arrive at the massacre, are like, well, shit. Uh, one, one girl approaches Denji, uh, holds him as he, he just melts away. We learn they're from the Public Safety Bureau. And uh, they, they offer him to uh, become specifically the main girl's, uh, she, she phrased that as human pet. Uh, so that, that, that's, that's episode uh, one. Uh, a decent, decent episode gets the general tone in mind. I don't really understand why the Yakuza like needs devil hunters, um, but oh, they they explain it um, because you can sell the de you can sell the corpses for a lot of money. Why? Because demon parts are used for other weird. Ch it gets yeah. into the series where there are things that occur they can use demon corpses. Okay, for. fair enough. I I will accept yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, then then we transition to episode two. Uh, we learn more about the uh woman who is uh uh Makuma. Yep. Is that uh, cool? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, Makama, who... Just a, just a really, really nice and good person, you know? Just like, <laughs> yeah. Really, what are, yeah, yeah, really Rem, what sweet. are your thoughts on Makama? Well, uh, you know, I, I think we could just adequately convey her character by talking about her introduction. Uh, in episode two, yeah. she's in a car with uh, Denji, and she's explaining, she's like, hey, uh, you can be a member of the Bureau, uh, or uh, we can just kill you. Those are basically your options. You are a worthless dog. You're going to do whatever I say, and I'm going to train you into greatness or kill you, one or the other, all right? Uh, which, of course, Denji is immediately like, I'm in love, which is also, uh, curiously, Sean's reaction to being called uh, a dog by an attractive woman. Oh, so oh, yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's realistic. It's relatable. <laughs> Uh, I, I think Makama, uh, there's a few routes it can go with Makama, right? Okay. So first of all, she's obviously uh -huh. a sociopath. She oh. is, <laughs> very blatantly. Uh, to make some possible predictions, and obviously uh, everyone here will know whether my predictions are right or not, but uh, well, one day yes. I'll find out. Uh, they could go a route that I don't think would be as interesting, uh, which would be your standard. It would be like subversive, like, oh she's a little cold and aloof, but in actuality, she has such a deep heart or it's just caused by vague trauma or something or that generic thing we've seen a million times. Uh, mm -hmm. The other option, not terribly original either. Uh, and this is the one I'm leaning towards happening a little bit more to give it a little more credit. Uh, I, I think that, uh, see, I, I think she's going to end up being villainous. I'm just trying to figure out whether it's like, proper villainous or a, a similar deal as we've already seen and we'll get to with power uh where it's like ah the baddie but not really uh but i i'm leaning towards hmm. it being a big bad uh either revealed as the big bad of season one or become a big bad in season two somewhere around there uh th that's my vague impression of makima what i've received so far all right you two Hold your okay. tongues. <laughs> I'm yeah. I I think those are definitely theories. I will say Fujimoto is very good at making plot that you are like. I wouldn't have guessed this, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't have figured this out on your own. Okay, interesting. I I also uh oh man I, I like oh man there's so much I want to talk about that I can't talk about yet. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, I was just like oh I also like wait a minute my example of this happens like way down the road damn yep, it yep yep <laughs> well that's the nature of the show I'm afraid you gotta you gotta keep yeah. that in mind I do this every week <laughs> yeah Jordan you gotta keep yourself under control when it comes to Chainsaw Man's <laughs> it's so hard yeah David yeah we we've blessed uh, you with the Chainsaw Man episode but then we've cursed you just, by saying no spoilers uh, past the first just five wait episodes. until the Witch Watch episode and then David will suffer God what a great manga. <laughs> Yeah, David is liter physically unable to keep himself from spoiling. Uh, it's actually uh, for the, for the manga. Witch Watch. Actually, for the manga we're reading right now, I and then entire time like, fuck, I really wish I was reading Witch Watch right now instead of this one. <laughs> instead of Tokyo Demon Bride Story, because it's the same, it's pretty much the same style of writing, but oh, worse. Oh man, that's, that's rough. Uh, so, uh, continuing in episode two, uh, Denji's like, 100%, I will, uh, I will join Pretty Girls tells me what to do i'm all in plus she feeds me uh and as as yes. uh, you guys mentioned yeah uh, growing up just in absolute poverty not having reliable sources of food or shelter or just the living necessities 
uh, providing that to Denji. Uh, you know, hey, as as with any uh, uh, abusive relationship forming, y- y- uh, you take the the vulnerable and the insecure. Uh, you you provide them with the bare necessities and demand strict obedience. Uh, so uh, Makma also like flirts a little bit with Denji, which Denji's like, holy shit. Uh, because it's it, it's already clear at this point, and it'll become even more overt in the coming episodes that Denji, uh, he he's a horny boy, boy oh boy, is he a horny boy? <laughs> he he wants oh yes. he he needs a girlfriend for a while. His driving motivation is just boobs. Uh, Rem, here's no Rem. You need to you need to understand. Denji has his eyes on the fucking prize. <laughs> okay, homeboy eyes is true about what he is <laughs> look, on the prize. Look. I have a few notes about this point coming to nobody's surprise. Yep. But allow me to clarify my points a little bit before everybody jumps and yells at me. Uh, All right, I'm I'm gr- I'm holding onto the chair because I think that having this be his driving motivation in how it is executed, uh, I think it's done poorly. Not for the reasons you may think. I understand. First of all. Uh, it's a nice subversion. You have a nice shonen protagonist who, instead of having noble uh, goals uh, or any of the such, it's not that he wants to avenge Pachita. It's not that he needs to pay off debt. It's not that he wants to hunt down devils. It's not any of it's. It's that he wants uh, boobs and then later just uh, general intimacy, right? Uh, so a nice subversion of uh, kind of like noble grand goals to more uh, personalized uh more more frivolous goals in comparison. I understand that uh, general subversion, uh, and especially I think that it actually works as a way to emphasize uh, that he is he's he's not a, a mature adult. Uh, he's very far from mature, and emphasizing that as a, a an actual character trait and actual story point. Right, it is relevant that he is reckless and immature. He's driven much more by the id in all of its forms, blood, gore, sex, violence, etc. Uh, all of that, I understand and accept. So, I am theoretically willing to accept this general character trait of Denji. Uh, which, the fact that I'd be willing to would surprise many of our listeners. So why do I say that I don't like how it's been executed? Because, unironically, most of his dialogue is all about this, and they don't try to develop any other shit. In these first five episodes, it is borderline insufferable how much of a point they make it. It's like, I I fucking get it. I understand. Please move on. Like, not only do I understand it's a point, I understand it's a major point, and then you still keep talking about it nonstop. It's too much. It's way too much, and I think that it is poor writing on this front. Rem, I, I don't think you got it. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't think you got it. He, he must have a very high IQ to understand, <laughs> understand Chainsaw Man. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I think will you say. It. So here, here's the thing that really is annoying about where we read the entire probably first season of the anime of Chainsaw Man is designed to make you feel a certain way about Chainsaw Man, and then the entire rest of the series is about deconstructing pretty much the first season of Chainsaw Man. Sure, and I can already see like the, the general direction that it's going to go. Once again, I I don't have a problem with this as a starting point. I think that the writing and the way that it emphasizes it, it's too much. It's the equivalent of like uh, a a book having an interesting story, right? But then having three chapters in a row, being like, "Hey, so uh, did 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 you notice this thing we were doing? Did this 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 is this is what we're doing with that. I don't know if you were aware. I don't know if you caught it. But just making sure you saw." It. And it's like, "I did. I did many times. How could I not have?" Uh, it. What I th- what I appreciate about the situation with Denji is that um, there is actually depth there. Like I I don't think he like. I don't think he actually wants, as he says, boobs. Like, he does, but that's endemic of the fact that he wants to live a basic, normal life and just go through the kind of things that, like, other kids his age go through. Like, like literally just being in a room, having jam for breakfast. That's, that's amazing to him. And so it's like, this thing that he is risking his entire life for to do, just get to fucking second base is like it 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 feels more like oh dude 
you're doing all this for that. Like he's he's kind of a simp. This will and... this will come as a, a shock uh, to those who have listened to our our last collaboration. Uh, I totally agree with you, Jordan. One hundred percent. I agree with all of your points there. Uh, once However. again, I think <laughs> I think that uh, when it comes to the general idea of trying to live that normal life, trying to get uh, those those like basic desires, pleasures, needs, etc., uh, w- working up Maslow's uh, pyramid. One hundred percent, completely agree. My I, I don't disagree with the concept or the direction. I only disagree with the ex- the execution and what I see as lazy writing in just how much they feel the need to talk about it. Because I don't even think it's like a little too much. I think you so, could have cut okay. the amount of dialogue about it in half, if not a bit more, and it would be just as successful to accomplish those goals while also leaving time to accomplish other goals. Give, it a, give more room for okay, scenes like I, I get uh, like the toast scene. Okay. More scenes that further oh, humanize yes. uh, yes. Benji. That is, that's, that's what Remington is saying. Like, just reduce the dialogue about no, the horny stuff it, yeah. and then focus more on the human stuff. That's And once again, I, I have a reputation yeah. on, on uh, our podcast of being uh, a nice prude. That's not at all the point I'm trying to make. I accept I accept the direction they're going. I even accept it being his motivation. I I think it is unnecessary to commit that many lines of dialogue every single episode exclusively or primarily for this one point where you could be fleshing out other characters, the world, emphasizing those human moments more. Uh, Like, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So, like, what you're saying is it's not that you dislike what it's saying. Like, you, you just physically dislike the actual dialogue as a result that like the the repetitive repetitive dialogue like it's you you see what it's doing but like it actually makes it not not as good yeah i I think it's undermining what it's trying to do because it just keeps going on and on it's like if you're like i want a ham and cheese sandwich and they're like all right you want uh 20 slices of cheese and it's like what pardon that's yeah, I feel like, and it's like, well, I mean, the goal is to get too much cheese, and I'm like, you can accomplish too much cheese with, you know, probably like three to five slices of cheese on your average sandwich. <laughs> that that would Ram. convey maybe six or seven if you really want to get excessive. Twenty, there's there's no point. You're just being wasteful. But Rem, he just really wants to touch some boobs. Oh boy, don't I know it? He does. <laughs> you also have to remember, Denji. He is, just does. He just needs to. You also got to remember. Denji is 16, so I don't mm-hmm. know if he is over-expressing his horniness as a 16-year-old teenager. No, I don't think that he's year-old. saying that. I don't I don't think that Rem is is uh saying that it's unjustified, just that as a result of the justifiable behavior, it means that a significant amount of the dialogue is very repetitive yeah. and points out that he wants to touch boobs. Let, let me point yeah. it out this no. way, right? You could even accomplish uh all of the talk about like boobs wanting boobs. In uh, a two-minute montage sequence, right? Imagine if, uh, similar to the montage sequence they had with him living with Aki, which we'll get to in a moment, but uh, a- Aki is introduced. He's a character very skeptical of Denji. He's working in the Bureau. Uh, a more more straight-laced is the impression we get of him. And uh, they, they give a little montage of them uh, living together, right? And the struggle that that is. They could have done a nice two-minute montage, right? Where they do all of those similar scenes, but where it's just Denji nonstop talking about like boobs and shit and Aki just getting frustrated and bored and Denji just continuing like passionately, excitedly talking about that. Then you convey, oh, he's talking about this all the time. We as an audience understand that. Uh, but you condense the actual time it takes in the episode itself. I see your point. Uh, I think it is heretical. And I am uh, <laughs> calling the Chainsaw Inquisition oh, perfect, perfect. over. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm really sorry. No one Ren. expects them. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, we can, we can finish this episode and then I'm sorry. Goodbye. Hey, it's, it's how it has to end. It's how it has to be. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Free Collapse good episode. is a good run, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I... Uh, oh, I mean, I, I'm not oh, out. Oh, you can stay. No, you can I... Stay. Uh, just... I <laughs> Thank you. I happen to feel like it just, it works better. But, like, I see why you don't. Like, I get it. I, I see where you're coming from here. Yeah. Yeah, so continuing in episode two, uh, eventually Denji is put on uh, his his first mission, right? And uh, he has to 
Uh, he, he goes, he immediately takes down a fiend with Aki. Uh, Aki and him have a disagreement about how uh, devils and things should be treated. Aki is a lot more merciless and a lot more ruthless. Uh, then uh, Denji, uh, they, we, we continue forward. We meet a new character who will be a partner of Denji. Uh, her name is Power. She is a fiend. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, yep. I'm going to describe this as just half devil, half human, which is also kind of what Denji is, but different. Don't worry about it. Our listeners don't need to know the difference. It's not super relevant. Uh, the point yeah, is, yeah, it's a little, it's a little complicated. Every but single you got person it. in fiend. the bureau is connected to a devil in some way, <laughs> without fa- look, yes. like uh, I we haven't been shown what Makama's connection is to a devil, but one million percent there is one, uh, or maybe she just is one. Who knows? But there's something going on there. Uh, everybody is either part devil, complete devil, or made a deal with a devil. Yeah, well, that's what you have to do to survive. Um, I, I just find it interesting because they make it sound like su- such a weird, surprising thing. And then it's like, oh, it's a, it, it, everybody's got it. <laughs> I, I, I think <laughs> it's not a great way to display like, oh, how weird and abnormal all of the characters you meet will have this character trait. It's like, I <laughs> believe you in the world that this is like a pretty abnormal thing. But I don't really feel that way because everything you've shown me leads to the contrary, you know? You're telling me this is these are some crazy things to happen. It's the only thing I see. Oh, so basically, power is the devil. Like, she, it, the devil. The, the, she the is devil. a devil. Yeah. She, right? Like, she's, yeah, she's, she's, she's a blood devil. devil. Baby. <laughs> yeah, she's the blood devil. Uh, whereas when these people are, are making contracts with the devil, with, with again, the devil, the devil, when they're making contracts with the devil, uh, they carve a pe- pentagram on their chest. No, uh, they sacrifice a part of their body or whatever the devil wants. And then they send like an aspect of the devil to help them. Like, uh, when Aki summons the Fox devil, that's not the entire Fox. Devil. We should talk about the Fox that's devil like... very briefly. Cause at one point Aki's going to summon the Fox devil, or at least, uh, an aspect of it, like you say. And it yeah. is a gigantic, extremely powerful, but we've learned that the devils gather strength uh, relative to the amount that they are feared, right? Um, yes. Why the fuck is the fox devil so strong uh, compared to things like... Oh, dude, are you kidding me? Foxes are like, especially yeah, in Japanese you know, culture, like foxes, foxes are like mystical. Livestock. Sure, yeah, but I, I feel like they They're, have but- faced things that would elicit much more fear and are much higher on the list of fear then fox but and yet so fox sharks. is insanely powerful well in, no again in japanese culture like foxes aren't just things that'll fuck up livestock they're also magical they have a ton of like rumors about them a, a lot of folklore around foxes and so like but does that like, lead maybe, to, to japanese people when they see a fox being like oh fuck hi you are basically the, the, the way co- that the the fear system works in chainsaw man is it is the accumulation of fear that people fear, feel like basically uh, this, the more horror movies you could make about the thing in question, uh, the stronger the devil is. If I write a story, also... if I write a story that says everybody in the world is afraid of post-it notes, does the post-it note devil become insanely powerful just because I've written that story? It gets story? a little bit stronger, you're right. Even, even if yeah. nobody has gets... actually felt fear from it. So here, here's something that we're neglecting as well as, okay, yes. The baseline power level of a devil is based on the actual fear of it, but devils can still become stronger. We actually see devils die and reincarnate, and their power levels change, um, and not a lot of time. So it's very possible the fox devil, by having a very good relationship with humans, means that she is able to grow in power in a way that devils that aren't able to kind of be provided for, because imagine, she has all the offerings she wants. She doesn't have to worry about being hunted by humans. That allows her to accumulate power in a way that more traditional devils cannot do, which lets her be more powerful than in the scaling of the fear of foxes. I I think all of this is interesting, and also it is juxtaposed with what the show has actually conveyed to me thus far. Look, the the first of all, like um, I feel like you don't really always need to like know it super hard with Chainsaw Man, I feel like they kind of, they're a little bit more subtle about it. They say it once or twice and you kind of got to think about it a lot, but like, they'll say it. Yeah. Suffice it to say, Remington. What the fuck did I just uh, say? That was not, that there's was a lot of I'm mythology sorry. around foxes and a lot of history there, especially in Japanese culture. And that, uh, translates a little bit to the idea of this fox spirit being powerful. I mean, Plus let's be honest, looks really cool. 
<laughs> also, don't forget, they don't have wolves in Japan, which means that a fox is taking up a lot of the fear real estate that a wolf would be taking up. Uh, I guess what I'm also saying is that... Um... It's not the object itself, it is the concept. So, like, the concept of the fox, the fear of the concept of the fox, not a physical fox, the concept of a chainsaw is, like, extremely evocative. You know, as, as Makima mentions, it's like people can imagine themselves being cut up in a bunch of ways because of that, and a lot of that has to do with, uh, I think, like, a, the fact that there are a ton of horror movies with chainsaws in them. Like, that's kind of where that comes from. It's basically... Whoever, like, Chainsaw Man is almost like a story where uh, the better horror movie monster you are, the better, the stronger you See, are. See, I agree completely. I just, I, I, even in Japanese culture, often foxes are looked to, like, extremely favorably rather than with fear. I, I feel like it's just a mild, inconsistent note. It's not the be-all, end-all, but it, it, it don't add up completely. If you I, say I, so, I, I do have I to be honest like that I think... Does, but... I do want to say, Rem, it feels like if you're making this, like, a point you're bringing pretty prominently, does this mean that, like, there's not a lot of, I guess, low-hanging fruit in terms of criticism <laughs> you have of the series? Because this is, like, to be honest, like, if there were a lot of structural issues, I feel like that's not the issue we'd be bringing up so, I guess, relatively early into the discussion of this series. Uh, you guys mentioned the the fox, and so I figured it would be a good point to, to mention this uh, and just mention the inconsistent nature of the system. They have outlined, hey, it works on fear, uh, but also... Fuck it sometimes. Rem's like, cinema sin, hold on, ding. Oh, God. Well, why are <laughs> Please don't so compare us to cinema sins. Please. <laughs> I, yeah. we, we're better than that. So, <laughs> cinema sin, Makima's ass is not that big. <laughs> um, I, I do have a question for you, Rem. So, fun fact Power is explicitly based on a very prominent American cartoon character. Would you like to make a guess of what cartoon character Power is based oh, Jesus. on? Jesus. Um,. I will say 100% certain that you've heard of this Oh, character. my God. Uh, I think, yeah, you know, I, I've always found her reminiscent of Steamboat Willie. <laughs> 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 hey, careful. Careful. You don't want to, you don't want to uh, incur the wrath it's of the It's not public to me. Big Disney's going to come clamping down. Yeah. They're too busy fighting. Oh, dude, the, the mouse devil. That, that's going to come and fuck you up. <laughs> oh, fucking uh, Disney oh, God. Devil. Rem, do you have an actual guess or would you like uh, to I'd like you to tell me. It is Eric Car <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Yep. <laughs> Can you see yes. that now that you think about it? He wasn't oh, expecting Jesus it. He wasn't expecting Christ. it. <laughs> no, I've broken, no, I've broken no. REM during that. Holy shit. <laughs> DJ, we gotta go. <laughs> is that your is that your carbon? <laughs> I've only seen the show once. <laughs> <laughs> You've only seen South Park yeah. once. Isn't it you like know what? for one time like ever? That. Yeah. Yeah. For, for the first time that's ever seeing it, that's actually not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, get, I give it a seven. Well, out hey, that's man. more than I deserve. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's more than Rem's going to rate chainsaw on me based on this conversation. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with you, David. This is These are uh, some of his uh, less harsh criticisms that he's getting. Yeah. Let's get yeah, it. Let's keep, yeah. Let's keep going. I really, yeah. really want to hear the things you add, like genuinely think are the main I'm issues just gonna break man. down at the end of this and go you guys are right it's the best fucking <laughs> I've ever seen <laughs> just <laughs> a divine experience be like, I, I finished the yeah. series after I watched the five episodes I had to keep going <laughs> all right so uh c continuing onward uh he goes on uh, Denji goes on a mission with power uh and they uh completely el easily eliminate uh sea cucumber devil uh and they get in a little bit of of trouble for uh for the way they handled that uh power was reckless and she blames denji they get in an argument uh we learn a little bit about power she used to have uh, a cat but a devil stole her cat and uh she tells denji hey that motherfucker if you can save my cat you can touch my boobs and denji's like well i know what i gotta do uh so power leads him to where the cat would be and unfortunately, it's a big old trap. It's a big old trap. She's like, I am now going to feed Denji to the bat devil. Uh, she she and the bat uh, attack Denji, fuck him up, and are like, all right, here you go, uh, bat devil. But uh, bat devil is like, you're you're fucking gross, man. This is fucking disgusting. <laughs> uh, because he's not uh, he's not pure human, so he's he's a gross boy. Uh, so the bat's like, okay, well, instead I I need to go grab like a kid or something, eat them instead. Um, but you know, uh, to tide me over till then, I'm just going to eat this, uh, th this cat too. 
and we get some like backstory on uh the cat. It's it's pretty. It's the simplest backstory you can imagine. Uh, Power found a cat. She bonded with the cat. It was her only friend. That's it. Uh, yep. Then the bat eats power, which I kind of don't understand because if Denji is disgusting, shouldn't she also be? And he he like kind of comments on it, but he couldn't. He he like took a little taste of Denji and was like, oh fuck that. Meanwhile, he just swallows power whole. Um, I think he was doing that more for just punishment. Well, whereas with it, uh, it also could just be huh. the fact that they're different in terms of the humanity scale there. Yeah, know. but the one that's closer to the humanity scale and thus should taste better is the one he couldn't even tolerate. Maybe he just doesn't like his foods touching. Ram, you ever consider that? <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, no, I think I think Sean has a point. <laughs> you don't want the beans to yeah. touch uh, the tomato too much. You know, it's just, it's weird. <laughs> uh, so Denji uh, uh, fights the, the bat, uh, transforms in, into the good old chainsaw boy. Uh, they, they fly and collapse into uh, the main city. Lots of collateral damage. Uh, and uh, eventually Denji is able to overpower uh, and kill the Bat Devil. Just fuck him up. Uh, I, I think that thus far, uh, three episodes in, uh, it's all, everything is decent, but I think, like, the pacing is a little bit weird. I also, three episodes in, I haven't gotten much of any depth on any characters or any, like, relationships. Uh, ev- everybody three episodes in is relatively flat. Uh, which, you know, it's it's still early, but I would have liked to, to see much stronger characterization by this point, much more depth by this point. Uh, but as I mentioned before, unfortunately, 60% of all dialogue surrounding Denji at this stage is about boobs. So... But what a 60% it is. Oh, what, what is 60%? Uh, what a 60% And, and truly poetic <laughs> in repeating the same thing again and again. Uh, I feel like, once again, you could have spent a lot of that time building that depth I would have loved to see. Um, but it doesn't happen. Uh, episode four, uh, we see this big leech devil uh, shows up uh, who was the lover of the bat devil and is now ready to fuck some shit up. Uh, we also get more flashbacks to Power and the cat. Um, f- first ones I, I understood. I was like, all right, simple. For, first the, of all, we, need to, uh, we, we do also need to discuss... Powers uh, naming skills with oh cat. yeah meowie uh, I would uh, yes in English the cat's name is meowie and in Japanese <laughs> it's nyako which is just meowie yeah, yeah. it's the same fucking yeah cat. it was great trailer <laughs> yeah uh, I just love that it's like oh look how fucking uncreative she is she's just like which you by the way you can see Eric Cartman naming oh his yeah, cat, yeah meowie. Uh, oh, but yeah. we we get yeah yeah David I agree. we have more flashbacks which at this point I think these ones are unnecessary because it is extremely simplistic like there's not much about Meowie and Power's relationship to understand uh spend a little bit more time on that than I'd like but not not too egregious uh what I really like what I do really like about it though is um like there's a the thing where Power comments on the fact that huh you're really skinny I'm gonna have to wait. I'm going to have to, you know, make you, uh, like, fatten you up before I eat you. And then you see the cat, and the cat is fat. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. she has the, she has made this cat big enough to eat, and she does it. She chooses not to. Yeah. And I, I, I think one of the issues with Chainsaw Man is that it tries to make you think it's, like, a by-the-book shonen, but it actually has a lot of really interesting details that you can view in literary analysis. And so you have to be patient for some of it. Like, you know, Sean and Jordan, I know... There's a reason there was so much of focus on these flashbacks. There are character groups, but the whole idea is that Fujimoto is trying to make these characters look extremely two-dimensional because he's trying to parody the existing shonen groups. Like, think about how much did Naruto talk about wanting to be Hokage? It was annoying, right? And he's making fun of that by literally your criticism of how Denji will not stop talking about how much he wants to feel boobs. But the problem is, is you have to play the long game, which is... The issue is that I know, Rem, you're not going to go and watch, you know, the 50 episodes that this ultimately would take. And so I think that's fair criticism, but it's just something to acknowledge that you have to play the long game with Chainsaw Man. And I... just as a 97 chapter part one piece, it is just probably the best hundred chapters you can read as a cohesive narrative. I, I don't think Chainsaw Man is as much of a slow burn as you're saying it is, David. Uh, I think it takes a little while to become like the best that it can be, but I think it gets pretty fucking good pretty soon uh it it's just oh yeah I, I mean, once rize shows up it's all gas you just yeah, have to the wait prob- the pr- yeah i mean i think it's again i think it's still very good like i extremely enjoyed watching 
these episodes, even if, even uh, though Rem is uh, heretical. <laughs> Uh, I will say again, I, I really enjoyed these episodes. I, I think it is, at this point, a very good show. I think it will become, but I mean, as we've seen in the manga, it becomes a great show. Oh, you know? I, I agree. This is all, I would not drop Chainsaw Man, but I would not say this is a 10 out of 10 anime based on that. Yeah, I, I think my yeah. my criticisms to, uh, to what you were saying, David, is that it feels a little too close of, oh yeah, in my hero academia, pervy great boy he was intentionally awful and pervy and poorly written you see and it's like okay sure but it you can intentionally do this uh i just think that that's not a great way to tell stories and i understand this one is a little bit more deliberate because it's going to once again be for that subversion uh eventually but i think even then you should be able to make it worthwhile in of itself and then uh later be like hey this thing that was already pretty decent it's actually amazing and astounding you thought it was good it's actually insanely uh thought out and creative and fascinating instead of being like oh this thing's pretty shitty but actually it's not though like that's that's just the less effective uh execution of that general approach but rem you just described chainsaw man in the in uh by saying a show that starts good and then becomes great that's chainsaw man i don't know what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about there you go I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. Like, what i don't get it <laughs> but like no i i also think that there is a huge difference between a character like mineta from uh, my hero academia and somebody like denji as, as i said denji is not pushy denji oh certainly i'm not comparing like Den, uh, the denji, two characters at all but mineta is way fucking yeah. worse yeah no mineta is awful like what i mean what i was saying earlier is that like it's extremely rare that I see a character in anime who's horny that doesn't bother me that way. And it's it's kind of impressive to me that Denji isn't like that, you know, like because, um, again, with the amount that he talks about boobs, you would expect this character to be completely fucking insufferable, like in terms of how he treats everybody else. But the fact is, like um, Denji, like, for instance, Denji never goes up to power and is like, hey, power. I'll get your cat if you uh, let me touch your boobs. Power is literally like, hey, I'll let you touch my boobs if you get your cat. And Denji is uh, opportunistic. I will say. <laughs> and Denji has very low, low agency. And, you know, he is a reactive character, which is very unique as a shonen protagonist. But yet that's the master of Chainsaw Man is it doesn't feel like Denji contributes nothing to what's going on. But and you see how he builds as an individual because he lacks any sort of drive or decision making capability because that he's lived his entire life literally being a dog. Like they call thing, him Fido in the dub. The thing is, I feel like you need to understand you need to understand how base and basic his desires are, because Chainsaw Man, as you see in just like the first few episodes, it a lot of the plot involves other people using these extremely basic desires to completely manipulate and use Denji. So you have to start out by going, no, he really cares about this. No, seriously, this is like important to you, to him. Like he decided not to kill this demon just because he didn't want to get blood on the porno mags. Yeah. Like it's uh I once again, I 100 percent agree with uh, what you guys have have said. Uh, b basically, mm -hmm. I I and I think I think now we can basically get into my overall thesis. I really, really enjoy what Chainsaw Man uh is aspiring towards what it wants to be i think that mm -hmm. there are some crucial flaws in execution that take it down several notches i think some writing issues some pacing issues uh that make it so that it, it doesn't reach the heights that it otherwise could have thus far from what i've uh seen uh and of course only talking about the the anime uh i think yeah. that the in an ideal world where all of its goals are achieved perfectly, I think that's a show that I adore. I really, I would really enjoy that. It would get uh eight to like nine point five for me. Um, real solid, and that's that's amazing considering that it's a genre that I tend not to vibe with too much. Uh, I unfortunately think that it, the idea of Chainsaw Man and what it's trying to do, uh, I I don't think it lives up to that great height to the degree I want it to, which doesn't mean that it's all bad. It's still quite, I think it's a worthwhile show. Uh, I, I am probably going to be rating it favorably in the end. Uh, it's just that I 
It didn't blow your mind. Yeah. You're not converted and it, to the it could have blown cult. my yeah. mind if the execution, if it was done better, because I think the idea is gotcha. what it's trying to do. Oh, I'm all about that. I think there's a lot of fascinating <laughs> concepts about the way it seems to be the tr overall trajectory, the way it seems to be wanting to develop this, the subversive nature, the uh, ideas and concepts that it's wrestling with. Oh, yeah. All of that, I think, is super neat. Uh, and I love to see it. Uh, I just don't think that those things are necessarily handled uh, in the best way. Not always handled poorly, but almost never thus far handled excellently either. I get that. And, you know, as as we've said, like this, these are probably like the weakest episodes of Chainsaw Man. Um, but honestly, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like that's uh, as good of a review from you as I could have hoped for. <laughs> yeah. <You know>? yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, uh, that, like, no, that was that was fine. Sean, hey. Sean, do you think if like we were like Rem just read? Till I, I don't know, like the end of Bomb Girl arc. Do you think his opinion would change? Or um, no? I think uh, he would have still some of the same issues, but overall, I think his his opinion would probably increase a little bit. Uh, it's just it's hard to say though because uh, you know you won't know until you actually get there. Your point uh, and the to the point yeah. of the thing, and uh, you know it's hard to say. But as things stand right now, uh, what we watch today is essentially like the bare minimum of what you need to at least spark an interest in the show. And Rem, would you say that this these first five episodes, while uh, flawed in a lot of ways, you think they spark interest in people watching the rest of the series? Oh, I, I, I would certainly say so. First of all, uh, for anybody who just is vaguely interested in Shonen, you'll, you'll fucking love Chainsaw Man. Uh, you, like, I imagine how most people consume Chainsaw Man is... Ha ha, men with chainsaws. Ha ha, boobs. Like it's it's very uh, <laughs> it it it's all those primal instincts that uh that at first, shonen at, should. At first, I think that's I think well, it I, might, I think yeah. some people okay. can delve deeper. I don't think most people are delving yeah. deeper. I I don't think the majority of people are looking for the deep themes of Chainsaw Man. Uh, I'll, I'll, even if uh many people are. Uh, I think especially where you've left me off. Uh, it's it's uh where they end up as, as uh. A squad going uh, to uh, going to this hotel that has some kind of of devil in it, and they end up repeating on floor eight, and it's a bit mysterious, a bit spooky. Uh, that's that's one of the best points you could have left me personally off because like those mysterious uh, spooky elements, it's like oh okay, that I'm all about that, uh, and so I'm at least interested to see what happens next, uh, and hopefully yeah. after whatever is happening resolves too. That's we're see gonna, you guys, I know what I'm doing. I know what gonna, I'm doing. <laughs> gonna, all right, all right, all right. We're gonna we're gonna talk to Remington again in like two weeks. He's gonna have like a poetry to plushie. <laughs> He's gonna be like super. Obsessed. Oh yeah, let, let me bring up oh, another man, one of my criti criticisms. N not nearly enough Pachita. Not nearly. <laughs> yeah. Like not yes. they should have unironically four to five times more Pachita. <laughs> yes, I God. will agree with you 100%. And actually. a part of there that, we go, David. This is a criticism yeah, of Chainsaw. A part man. of that is like, Pachita's cute. I love Pachita. Give me more. But another part is just, Can it, I... it, it builds up like, oh, you're, you're one friend, right? The one friend you ever had in Squalor. The only companionship you ever had in a story that... It seems like Denji, because uh, he have, he's eventually able to squeeze some boobs and he finds it disappointing. He's like, was that it? And he eventually learns that like, oh, maybe if there's a sense of intimacy behind it, it can be so much more powerful. So that sense of like companionship and intimacy is one of Denji's major driving themes. So it feels a little unfortunate that his first companion living in squalor, being there with him when it was toughest, uh, gets one episode uh, and not much more than that and then even then so, he's, he's not given proper mourning it's like oh that that sucks my my dog's dead that's so sad anyway boobs it's like okay that could have so, so, that could have been done better so for, first of all first of all i will say this time watching chainsaw man again i did re i did get the sense that the first episode of chainsaw man is the last episode of a completely different anime <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 uh but also, you know, technically Pochita's on every single uh, page because Pochita's still alive in Denji's heart. Oh, okay, he okay. His heart. Now that is the yeah, most shonen yeah. thing you've so, yeah. said all episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. I just it's love, literally true. I just I just love when Pochita says what his dream is. 
later on. Yeah, well, unfortunately, yes, yes, you got, yes. can't talk about it. Amazingly, also boobs. Oh, but it's so Pedina adorable. just also wanted boobs this oh. whole time. That, yes, that do- something what like that. that dog doing? And that also, dog you know... <laughs> Uh, I know. I feel like Sean's like, David, if you talk about the ma- what's happened in the manga anymore, I will fucking <laughs> No, no, no. I'm not that violent. You know, you know something, Rem? Do you think that the reason why you want more Pachita is because you didn't get enough Pachita? Like, what if, uh, what if you had gotten too much Pachita? As much as I don't think that's possible. Yeah, what if they just, 60% of the episode, they were just talking about Pachita the whole If they time. inverted yeah. the <laughs> ratio of Pachita to boob talk, that would be an objectively better show uh, and also <laughs> one I would love way more. Like, I think it would up the quality of the show in an objective fashion. But then for me, oh my God, it would be one of the best shows. Uh, if- so let me ask, let me ask you this, Rem. Do you think that uh, Chainsaw Man is uh, the DNA digivolution of Pochita? Would you uh, say? I, I, I... Sure, why not? Fuck I mean, it, it makes uh, about as much yeah, sense as most yeah. Digivolution. They both look like Digimon. It's true. You can't tell me. I, I will say another like thing, Digimon. and I, I let this go because you know it. It's kind of it. It has elements of of stupid shonen bullshit. The Chainsaw Man design is pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's I think it's perfect. That's why it's awesome. Stupid, and that's yeah, what I, makes I, it great. It's, which it's is exactly, why I let it go. Yeah. I this is why I didn't make a huge deal of it. But I have I have to let it be known, like. It is. It's, it's a dumb Digimon design. It's almost it's as really stupid, stupid as you know, great. using three swords and holding a third sword in your mouth. You know, it, I, I, it's stupider yes, than that. I, I would agree. say. Yeah. <laughs> I think I honestly think it is less stupid than holding three swords in you than holding two swords in your hand and one in your I mouth. Suppose it's I, I it's less stupid in execution. It's more stupid in visuals. Yeah. But <laughs> with that in mind, uh, Rem. What's the mal score for Chainsaw Man? You gotta okay. nail this. All, all right. right, all right. Uh, it's gonna be insanely high. It's gonna be extremely high. Uh, th- for me, the only question is, am I dealing with, like, somewhere in the 8.5 to 9 range, or is it even above 9? Uh, Especially when you consider that it's you've had about, eh, five to six months of cooldown, so it's not as fresh of a show. So like, the, I think it's height. going to end up being... I mean, no matter what, it's in an insanely high range is what I'm predicting. I think I think uh, people are going to be much closer to the floppy boys than they are to to me, in, in opinion. I think they're going to say... Those like, sloppy, floppy boys. Sloppy floppies. Uh, I think... Uh, better, it's worse than sloppy toppy. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say <laughs> that it's probably, on Mal, it's a sloppy floppy 8.73. Well, Rem, uh, with 605,000 ratings... Uh, Chainsaw Man, the anime, is sitting nice and pretty at 8.61. Ooh, that's pretty good. That is insanely high. Yeah, Uh, very, very high. It's currently uh, ranked number 80 on the site. Good God. Yeah, that that is... Of all anime, damn. Yeah, of all anime. Uh, The manga is a little bit higher at an 8.76, just for you floppy boys. Uh, So the manga side of Mal rates it as the 40th best manga. So there you go for that. Well, the the manga has also long since gotten to the gotten oh, good. Yeah. Is oh the yeah, thing. yeah. But <laughs> the comparison is still there. So, generally speaking, people love and adore this show. They have fairly good reason for loving and adoring this show, and it shows. Uh, there's a weird like 0.6 percent of uh ratings that gave it a one out of ten. Ah, the hey, <laughs> those them. people. Um, I, I'm not in that category. Right? Those are just the blind contrarians of the world. I'm an informed contrarian. Those... It's different. <laughs> I swear. Those are the enemies of our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the, we must destroy them. The blind them. contrarians are my enemy because everybody clumps me in with them, and then I gotta be like, no, but did you hear me actually make points, though? <laughs> did but you? Then, hear? But then you <laughs> insulted the water, Rem, and that's where we drew the line. <laughs> Wait, the water that makes pizza taste oh, better? Oh, fuck. Fucking All right. Well, let, let's, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having uh, this conversation again. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to uh, David and Jordan for uh, popping in on, on this episode. It was lovely to have you guys. Uh, and and uh, take a moment to just uh, shill yourselves out. Tell, tell our lovely listeners where they can find you. Oh, well, first of all, thank you so much for having us on, Sean. Not you, Rem. You can go fuck yourself if you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I love you, Rem. Um... 
so yeah thank you though sincerely it's always a blast uh third time i think this is the first time that i didn't have to walk out during a fight between you and jordan so let's keep that up for episode four um but you can find us uh you can find us shonen fluff that's me jordan and a guest including we've had both uh sean and rem and dylan on episodes um, at shonenflop.com, that's S-H-O-N-E-N-F-L-O-P, where we take a look at lesser-known manga, sometimes good, usually bad, and yeah, see, it's, it's did they deserve bad. to be canceled early or not? We've read a lot of fun stuff, including material by the creator of Naruto, by the creator of Black Clover, um, and even the creator of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, so really appreciate if y'all check us out. Oh, yeah, we read Araki's old shit. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Do you mind- <laughs> do you mind if I plug some other stuff? Go right ahead. No, fuck off. Plug whatever you guys want. This is your chance. Fuck yeah. So I have uh, a second podcast. Ooh. It's right. Uh, I'm cheating on David. Um, It is called Mission Ignition. Now, there was this little old TV show from the 90s called Vampires. And you might think, oh, like vampires. No, van with an N <laughs> oh, because it's V A N dash P I R E S. And the reason for this is because it follows uh, these three kids who are all played by young adults, obviously, uh, who transform into horrifying CG car abominations uh, <laughs> to fight other CG car abominations who suck gas. Uh, it It is very difficult to explain, and Gary Oldman may be in it. We're not 100% sure. (laughs) There is a character. His name is Van Heel Singh, H-E apostrophe L-L Singh. Uh, And yeah, uh, uh, it lists him as Van Heel Singh as himself, and it's rumored that that is uh, Gary Oldman. For the record, there is no rumor. It is just simply someone on Wikipedia was like, (laughs) I think he kind of looks like Gary Oldman, and it entirely spun off of that comment. No, that that comment was like straight up, it's Gary Oldman in an unconfirmed role. (laughs) So somebody was confident about this when they said it, is my point. And and he does look like Gary Oldman. But anyway, um, also, but yeah, so check out Mission Ignition, where me and my friends... uh, Sham Bam Bamina and Ganymede go into that fucking show, which is impossible to explain. And also, uh, check out my Instagram, Jordan Forms Art. Jordan Forms Art. I also want, for the record, we've been doing Shonoff for three years, and I've yet to be on an episode. (laughs) I told you you would be on the final episode, David. Yeah, two years ago you said that. We have we're on episode we're, we're like halfway through the fucking series. We never do it. <laughs> it's so, like we just put out a they new episode. They only do it when there are eclipses over Philadelphia. So. Basically, yeah. Oh, oh my god. god! It took us over a year to edit the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so it's god. an active project that you guys can subscribe to very clearly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of subscriptions. Notice but- how I don't have a Patreon for <laughs> Mission Ignition. I would like to but point we, that out. But we at Shonen and Flop have a Patreon. So actually, Sean was our wonderful guest on our first episode on the miniseries Mago-chan, where what if Cthulhu was small and adorable and owned by a 14-year-old girl as her pet pseudo-cat? Her cat, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's great. Sean, do you have any other things you would want to say about Mago-chan? Ah, it is a gag manga for certain. <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah, it's, got it's gonna make it. you gag <laughs> oh my fucking god but once again guys we do love and appreciate you very much for joining us on this one uh and this would normally be the part where uh we do our patreon rates but um we ran a little long and i unfortunately have to go <laughs> oh i'm so sorry no 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 it's fine yeah. i look hey I have egg on my face for not realizing that our conversations always run long. Uh, so, Ram, you and I will probably have to record Patreon later. And plus, since this is coming out later, we probably might want to wait a little bit for the Patreon reads on this one anyways. Uh, yeah, no, this is, like, is there a correlation between rain and pizza? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no, hey, are you recording right now? Are you recording right now? No, yeah, are you recording right now? Like, we need to, yeah, record... Yeah, please start recording right now, because we need to have a conversation about this. All right. Should we? All right. Should (laughs) we do a clap sync? Yep, 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 yep. All All right. right. Uh, uh, Clap sync on Mark in three, two, one. Mark. Okay, so we were just going to jump straight into the episode, but then we heard the most buck wild crazy thing on the face of the planet. (laughs) Uh, And I, David, I want you to explain yourself. Yeah, explain it on your own terms. So I, yeah. 
I just think that pizza <laughs> tastes better if you eat it when it's raining. I just think that, you know, it's just what you eat when it's raining. It's like how in Japan everyone eats croquettes when there's going to be a hurricane or a Dave, typhoon. David, you, it goes, you eat pizza when it's raining. David, it goes further than this, though. You have a justification Yeah, so my main it. theory is I genuinely think that the pizza tastes better because... <laughs> Somehow, I, I think like Just it kind of steam. It kind of further steam cooks the pizza. The diff, the heat difference between the the humidity and the air. Are they cooking the pizza outside? The, yeah, like well, we're, yeah. Some in New York City when space is tight, sometimes. Are, is that where you're getting your pizza? At one hundred percent. I don't see how that's relevant. To that. <laughs> <laughs> If David is David is laid inside, out like then th there's going to be a negligible <laughs> difference in the humidity levels. Listen, when you eat Thank you. if you when you eat pizza like me, a negligible difference, buddy, oh, that God, makes all the, the difference. Tap water Thank thing you all over so again. much, you guys. Oh, God. Look, I, no, I, mean, I, mean, I don't tap water thing has some merit to it. The Jordan, rain does not. Wait, Jordan, <laughs> I, I feel like you guys have you guys even uh, been yes, to New York City and had New York pizza? Well, fuck I me, because I wasn't ha. expecting you to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have, Jordan. You're an hour and a half away from yes, me. Yes, yes. You, you're so like, our you, have, have, you would have known that obviously this pizza is only good because of the humidity. <laughs> and the tap water. <laughs> yes. You're getting extra New York City water oh, oh, on I, your hey, pizza. I, 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 this, this is I, really wait, are, okay. my theory. Are, are you just like going outside with your nice cooked pizza, getting a few drops on it, and then eating it? Is that... <laughs> I do eat it by an open window, yes. But is that Dude. what you do? <laughs> Explain yourself. Because you are you are saying it as if it's some universal quality. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how you make the pizza, where you make the pizza, where you eat the pizza, the rain will make it better. It just, it's, the, I, maybe it's the ambience of it. <laughs> You know, it's oh, like man. it's like how sure. it's like how sake tastes better if you pour it facing the direction of Japan. I, I, what? Okay. what are you talking about? <laughs> Guys, this is your problem now. I, they, uh. And for the record, if you're in Japan, you have to pour it towards Mount Fuji. Look, look, I understand if you want to be like, these are the rituals in which I eat food or like, I like the vibe or this is a fun thing I enjoy doing. All That's of that, I understand. But saying that I think that for genuine actual physical reasons pizza act objectively tastes better when it happens to be raining <laughs> that that's what i'm saying <laughs> box i, I, I think there was, was a period like... in time where you just get the boxes rained on a little bit <laughs> it adds some extra moisture <laughs> okay to okay wait is that a little prerequisite little are we establishing I, for the record, it as a will prerequisite? Heat up pizza with, I, I use the pan method to heat up pizza, and I will actually pour water in the pan. Are you pouring the rain water in the pan? When I, <laughs> yes, what? I save it. I actually, I have a bucket. I have a bucket I L save for when I'm warming L up let the me, pizza Let me tomorrow. ask you this. Let me ask you this so we can really just clarify what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> I can't wait for this to be your pre-banter that has like 15,000 listens. All right, I go I go to to a, a pizzeria, all right? They uh -huh. have those? Uh, they in they make me a pizza inside. I then eat the pizza inside. At no stage <laughs> does anybody go outside or interact with the raining outside. So you're saying that during this entire better. process, the door to the pizzeria is never. You're in like a you're in like a holding cell. This entire thing is like a military it, complex. It's, it's, it's a slow day for this pizzeria. Yeah. So they just it, the door okay. happens to not open. Does the pizza taste better in this circumstance? Up, when you no, already answer, open the no, door up to the pizzeria the to get question. inside, they haven't started to make the pizza. Does that make the pizza taste better? Just the fact that it's raining outside. Yeah. No, look, and that was look. never discussed. I was saying when they carry the pizza, deliver it to you, and the this box man, gets wet. Who said has the audacity it has to be like, extra how water ridiculous, exposure. how absurd for you to it think that, better. Remington? Of course it wouldn't make a difference. That's what I'm fucking saying. This is why I didn't get, this is why I, I didn't get a lot in a mix <laughs> God. I actually, I remember that I actually took an IQ test where it was like he may be very smart, but he refused to finish the test, <laughs> so we can't actually know if he's smart. Unfortunately, smart he started he raining, smart, and so he immediately started it. eating pizza. We couldn't get him to finish. We couldn't get him to focus. He immediately that. left the premise. I'm actually eating pizza right now. Of pie. Well, guys, I will say, I, I will say, I agree with you, but I should point out you live in a desert. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's true. We, we right, do live right. in a desert. They haven't seen. 
They haven't seen water in years. Oh, God. Like, I agree with you. I wish it rained I agree more. With you. Yeah. Well, hey. Yeah. We've seen like, frozen water. You know. Lots of it. <laughs> but does ice have the, the same sky, effect, it's David? Snow. Does snow? Yeah, that's a good does question. Snow does snow effect? have the same effect? No, of course no, not. Of course not. That was, what a silly <laughs> question, Jordan! <laughs> You'd have to leave the pizza out for much longer if you're gonna have to melt to hydrate the pizza. David, just like, oh, what if you just ran a sink over your, like, like tap water over your pizza, like they were saying, just put it in the fucking sink, turn on I'm the not tabs. Gonna, I'm not, okay, <laughs> so, okay, I'm not sloppying, I'm not sloppying my pizza. <laughs> okay. Which that is a, that is a, I think you should leave reference yep. for anyone super okay. with hey, a new, 500 new IQ that's coming, seen that uh, show. Coming at the end of May. But, uh, okay, okay. But sometimes, David, I feel, I feel show. like you're extremely like smart and stable and like you're you're just no. a functioning member of society. <laughs> no. And then you occasionally just come out with some bonkers <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, this is the real David. This is this is the David that everything this is like else how is Terrence a Howard. This is like this how is Terrence David. Howard thinks that like what is, it's like one times one equals two or something. Oh, and he has yeah, his yeah, own yeah, form yeah, of yeah, math. Yeah. Hey, so David, uh, if me and Rem were to come and visit you in New York and it happened to be raining, you would be one hundred percent convinced that if we all went out to grab pizza, that we would just have a grander experience as a whole. Yes. Well, to keep in Absolutely. mind, you guys, you guys do then need to have uh, the same pizza. Yeah, we need a control group uh, <laughs> later. Exactly, without, you need a control group. That shouldn't be too hard because, you know? like, how, like, if we spend like three days in New York and it happens to rain, we just get pizza on two different days. Easy. So, yeah. Rem, I, that's yeah, our plan unless, for the future. We've got to go to New York and we've got to we've <laughs> got to test We're on ourselves. our way to New York now. <laughs> We're going. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys come visit anytime. God, I. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a that's a very pregnant there pause. There we go. There we go. Just need to emotionally recover. <laughs> yeah, right, we... let, let's get into the actual episode. All right. Okay. How about this? If you guys are in New York City, I'll treat you to pizza if it's raining. <laughs> Only if it's raining. Though. My treat. Only if it's raining. <laughs> Only if it's raining. If it's not, uh, you're on deck. <laughs> Christ. Okay. All right. <laughs> so. Oh, I... thank you so much, you guys. I felt insane. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, no, what? Of course, that's how it is. No, yeah, I, I think it makes total sense. I and I'm just like the skill is David, the skill is, however, the best way yeah, to warm that, up that a pizza. That was never part of the issue. Sure, sure. That was never, that was the never issue. part of this. But you use water when you use the skillet method, so there's something to it. There's a nugget. <laughs> I, don't think it has to do it. I think that's different. We need, I, I, we I need to like talk like about water anime. In we need oh my to. God. We need to. Yes, you're right. Oh, I yeah. was not expecting fucking Obama cookies part two. Um, <laughs> God, <laughs> God, God, David. Okay, I love you, buddy, but my goodness. I forgot about Obama cookies. Uh, so <laughs> I love you too. All right, All right, let's get started in three, two. One, Mark.